Welcome to the Cube's coverage of KubeCon EU 2024, live from Paris, France. Join hosts Savannah Peterson, Dustin Kirkland, and Rob Strache as they interview some of the brightest minds in cloud native computing. Coverage of KubeCon Cloud Native Con is brought to you by Red Hat, CNCF, and its ecosystem partners. The Cube's coverage of KubeCon EU 2024 begins right now. Good afternoon, nerd fam, and welcome back to KubeCon Cloud Native Con, CNCF's biggest European event, and actually the biggest KubeCon there has ever been. Very exciting week. My name is Savannah Peterson, joined by three really rad dudes right now. I am, I am looking forward to our show wrap. You, we've got Dustin, and we've got Rob. I want to hear all your hot takes. I want to hear, I want to hear what you expected, what didn't happen, what's missing, where we're going. You, I'm starting with you because we haven't had you on oh, yeah. yet this week. Yeah, yeah. So I, I came here with, you know, expectations of it being a KubeCon, me being in sessions, and that didn't happen at all, because <laughs> the show floor is so busy. I just could not walk for five meters without bumping into someone. So my expectations were, you know, okay, but it just knocked it out of the park. Absolutely, the energy, the community, it's just buzzing. And I feel like I was thinking about it uh, out to dinner, actually, when we were out to dinner earlier this week. I mean, just what a family this is. It, is. I, it really does feel like, I'm like, oh, I'm just yes. going to go hang out with all my buds in Paris. Yeah. And we call this work. Yeah. I mean, yeah. What about you, Dustin? What did uh, you, it, expectations versus reality. Well, totally agree with you on the show floor. Absolutely packed. Yeah. Uh, really good interest across the board from community developers, some uh, maybe new to the open source and CNCF community, um, but a lot of enterprise interest, a lot of EU enterprise interest in you know, the various solutions that are surrounding us here on the show floor. Yeah. Yeah, I, I thought it was same thing. I, I was overwhelmed by the floor here. I just spent that last hour, I think I went to three booths and had three very long conversations about very interesting stuff that I, I didn't even realize was going on underneath the hood in some of these projects. And I think that, that to me was one of the, the keys is that the amount of projects that are going on is just massive. And the community is massive and as you guys were saying, it's like 51% new people into this show which about equates to about the number of new people that were at a little bit more new people at this show than we're even at the one in Amsterdam a year ago where it was about 60% of 10,000. You have 51% of 12,300. It's a, about the same. So, I mean, st statistics wise, it's pretty impressive. Great trajectory. Yeah. yeah, it is. It is really impressive, and I think I think we're reaching a new stage of maturity within the ecosystem as well. It's it's a lot less hype. Kubernetes is actually being deployed. Edge. It's. I think. I think the AI stack is actually driving a bit of that as well. So I think we're at a place where this isn't just a project. People aren't thinking about it. We're actually implementing and and seeing what that what that looks like. You. What do you think has been the biggest change since you and I were seated next to each other in Amsterdam? Ooh. So the biggest change I think is that. You know, this show is more about the cloud native stuff than it is about Kubernetes. Mm. So I'm looking forward to that name change next year. Um, but I think you know, the, it is getting boring in a sense that Kubernetes, Kubernetes is just mature. Like you said, people are implementing it. We have the mature solutions around it. We have the ecosystem. That means we can now focus on the part that I think is way more interesting, even though I, I am an infrastructure engineer by, you know, by my history. We're looking at the developer, how to empower them, how to enable them to actually build something that makes sense for the business. And that's what exciting, you know, that's what excites me in this show is actually having those conversations about what the developers need, what the business needs. And we're kind of in a phase where we can just say, okay, the infrastructure part, it's there, it's commodity, again, which I just enjoy. I think you're absolutely right. I think, would you, would you agree? What it, what it, I mean, I think it's dead on. And I mean, if you look at by the numbers that they were showing from a contributions and number of people contributing, yeah. Yeah. Back pay, or backstage, not back page, that's a whole different thing, but backstage. It's all right, we've said a lot of words I up know. here. It's, it's, he, and you're, we're both dyslexic, so it's just yes, a, it's it's, a it's, it's <laughs> danger rife, zone rife, out here. Rife with, with Buckle your seatbelts, folks. Yes, this is, this is going to be fun. But <laughs> backstage has more individual contributors than any of the other projects that are out there. It may not have all of the contributions, but 
to me, that's the developer. That's, hey, the, inter the interface between platform engineering and developer, and I think we've heard through a number of the discussions we've had this week, how do you make that, how do you make platform engineering understand what the developers need, and oh, by the way, now you got this guy called a data scientist who's trying to put other things and models in places that models haven't been before, and oh, by the way, the developer has to go, okay, where is this, and how do I do that, and so I think, Focus on the developer, focus on cloud native. I agree, and I think the one thing was clear to me, uh, if you look at the shirt, big letters, cloud native, small letters, Kubernetes. I think, I think they are going that way, and I think they are, I mean, I think it should swap the names around, and you know, but I think it's great stuff. Are they changing the name? I don't know. No. Oh, that was no. just you, that was you, <laughs> okay. I wasn't sure we're if that was an announcement happen. that was we're made. We're going to make we're, it happen. We're, yeah. we're, 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 uh, we're, we're voting that direction. Exactly. That's, that's <laughs> what you can say. We're, we're balloting out for it. And it's not too dissimilar from Linux, right? You say Linux, and that's this like tiny little piece that's the kernel of an operating system, and then out of that builds an OS, and then out of that builds mm -hmm. you know, everything on top of that, but Linux is this one word, and that's kind of Kubernetes at the heart of so many other things that you know, once you, you really take the macro view, you end up in you know, the whole philosophy of, of cloud native um, management uh, at the platform side and application development from a developer's perspective. So you're saying it's marketing? Uh, sure. <laughs> yeah. What's wrong with marketing? Nothing, nothing wrong with that. It is shorter, <laughs> and they have a you know, nice little acronym of KS, you know, and like, I, 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 yeah. I mean, again, I get it, but I think I'm happy, like Yoop is happy, that the focus is changing towards the developer and, I, I, and cloud native, and I know you are too, so I... And, I, it's, and it's not just the developer, and I haven't seen it that clearly on the show floor this week, but I have seen you know, hints of this starting to happen where we're kind of integrating the data science side of this into the cloud native world. So we're applying DevOps principles to not just Dev and Ops, we're applying them to the data science realm as well. Which means we're now you know, more and more set up, and this is going to continue for a couple of years, where we're just more set up to also have all of those data stories integrated into all of the stuff that we're doing here, from DevX to infrastructure, to AI and everything in between. So that's going to be exciting, I think, in the next couple of years, is to see how much of that data world is going to you know, integrate in the world that we know in the cloud native space. Yeah, I think you're absolutely right. So, building on that a little bit, since you know I love to ask this question, what are we going to be able to say in London that we can't say here? Youp, I'm going to you first, because you got a cheeky grin. Yeah, so I'm going to go to data science, right? Like we're, yeah. we're going to see the integration of those skills into the teams that we already have, instead of them being siloed off on the side of a, an organization. Um, but it's going to take a little while, so maybe not London, maybe the year after, we'll see. Yeah, when we're back in Amsterdam. That'll be fun. Yeah. Yeah, yeah. What about you? What do you think, Rob? What's, what, what are we going to be talking about in London? Or Salt Lake, if you feel really bold. Yeah, I mean, Salt Lake, I think we're going to have a lot of, uh, I think even in Salt Lake, and we kind of touched on it this morning, that security for AI and Kubernetes inside the platform, end-to-end -end security for cloud-native apps that are data-based and data products. And I, I think that's going to really be a big piece of Salt Lake and building on that into London as well. Mm -hmm. Dustin? I'm going to go with um, the GPU utilization problem being solved. Uh, we, we heard a little bit about that and just now released very recently in Kubernetes 130, we start seeing some of the, the DRA advances we talked about on, on Wednesday. Uh, the you know, persistent, if it's not a GPU shortage, just the demand, the over demand for GPUs and yet, inside of clusters, uh, not entirely fully well utilized. Uh, also in the keynote this morning, we saw some workloads performing at certain sizes better on CPUs. And so I think probably by Salt Lake, but if not, certainly by London, I think that'll, that piece will be a solved problem, really, you know, deep down in the, in the scheduler around the resource I think that's a bold. I think that's a bold prediction. I think you're giving people a lot of credit. Well, I don't, we'll see. Yeah, I, tr I'm I trust curious. this community. Well, I yeah. mean, you're, you're skeptical. <laughs> I'm skeptical that in six months we're going to have solved the GPU problem. Oh wow! I didn't say solve the GPU problem, but I mean utilization. Do you, utilization. But, but even even there, I think I, we're, we're 
people are just now architecting their AI strategy. They, they, they've obviously, I mean, many organizations have had some division of this, but, but we're in a real inflection point there, and so we're going to be doing different things, solving different problems, asking different questions. I don't think we can solve the, the utilization problem until we understand all the problems we're going to be solving for, and I think we're still discovering that, quite frankly. Yeah. I think you're so, dead on, and I think what was thanks, what was Rob. actually yeah, no, I mean, you, <laughs> great insights. You're not just a pretty face, so we know that. I'm like, but I, I think what's great is you have people come into the table, like Nvidia, even though it's GTC week as well, was here yeah. donating code and creating APIs. I think when we had Oracle on this morning talking about how she's advocating because they're not just using GPUs, they're using CPUs and you have TPUs over at Google and other stuff. They're advocating for standards for interfaces to those GPUs, which I think then helps to get to solve exactly what you know, yeah. Dustin is talking about. And I think it's good to hear that that has surfaced I, I think Salt Lake will, will also be aggressive, but hey, I, you got to put targets out there and see if they can get them, so. I love it, I respect it. I respect, <laughs> I respect a bold claim no matter what. I would love if we've, if we've optimized that though, and, and I mean, that'll make everything more sustainable. There's a lot of benefits of that happening. Sure I believe in the cloud native community. Okay. I just don't necessarily believe that enterprise has figured out AI yet, and that oh, affects God, no. GPU no, strategy. No, no, no. So it's kind of, yeah, it's less that. Yeah. It's not that I don't trust the wonderful people in this room, <laughs> You're spot on. It'll yeah. take a little bit longer to generally solve that problem. <laughs> We're in Paris, Youp. What was the best thing you ate this week? Oh, the croissant, the first one. Oh, melty, buttery. I actually haven't had one yet, and now I realize I need to. You're, uh -oh. I'm now immediately hungry. What about you, Dustin? You had a pretty swanky a once in a lifetime meal. I did, that was pretty spectacular. Uh, last night I actually had champagne and caviar, though. Oh, two of my favorite things. I, Literally, that's it. Uh, yeah. Just, yep. I'll just stop there. <laughs> <laughs> I'm jealous, I'm going to have to figure out where he went after the show. What about you, Rob? Best thing you ate? Yeah, I, I still go back to the bread. Yeah, I mean, I, the bread that doesn't <laughs> upset your stomach when you ate like 13 loaves of no, it. No kidding. With cheese, with good cheese. Oh, oh, the cheese. Oh, cheese and good bread, I mean, just unbelievable. It is, it is absolutely unbelievable. It's going to be really tough to top Paris as a location. Yeah. I mean, I, and you can- Wait, and you don't think London has food like that? <laughs> I mean, <laughs> oh, wait, wait. I thought you were going to down the Salt gauntlet. Lake. Where, where do you want to go? If you had, you know, the, the master plan and could select after, you know, these next four are planned, but savvy, where would oh, we go? That's a great question. Well, I'm a, I'm a warm weather person who loves wine. So I would say somewhere in Italy. Oh. I'd do like Florence if I were to pick somewhere, and then have a little Tuscan vacation on the 20 back 20 years of conferences, and I have never been to Italy for a conference. I've, I have been I've invited to speak in Italy once, and it was one of the best business trips I had yeah. ever. So. I did a conference in Rome, Okay. and Rome, Rome is capable of doing it and has the space. Uh, it's also easy to get in and out of, yeah. but it's not as, it's not Florence, but it's, it's still very, like, and the food, and it's, it's I, think, I think Rome would be uh, an excellent, um, We're just or planting that seed. Yeah. We're planting and, that yeah, seed. Yeah. Yeah. Not that we have any power or authority yeah. here. <laughs> I, I'll take Rome or Barcelona. I mean, I think. I, I could see it being in Barcelona. I actually, Barca. I thought I it might Barca. be Barca. Yeah, uh, and I mean, we were just there for MWC. It's a great city. Madrid's great too. I mean, if we're talking Spain, yeah. Yeah. Madrid, so much fun. Yes. Good food too. Yeah, basically we just want to eat and talk about Kubernetes and have some champagne. <laughs> it's a rough life out here on theCUBE. Yeah. Very rough, very rough. <laughs> we had some really excellent guests on the show this week. We had Red Hat, we had, we had Cassandra Chin, who is the 20 year old author of an illustrated children's book about Kubernetes and AI, which even saying that sentence out loud is amazing. Yep. She is so inspiring, lots of inspiring people. We also had the CNCF Deaf and Hard of Hearing group just on right before this, and it matters. It matters, we are, we are privileged people, and I think it's great that there are there is that working group. It's been in less than a year, um, but also that they're really trying to make all events, not just here in Nerdland, more accessible for, for and the deaf and hard of hearing. Yeah. yeah, and inclusive, and, and, I'm, and even illustrated by the fact that they invite hearing folks into their community as well. It's not meant to be, and, and I, I don't think I would have intuitively thought about that normally. I would have thought I was you know, overbearing or kind of inserting myself in that situation. So I'm actually going to personally check it out because it's been really. Uh, I, th I think it's about having allies and abilities, and we were actually talking off set while you were on doing that segment that it's about neurodiversity in yeah. actually yeah. developing these projects and you get such a better outcome when you bring more diversity to that 
table, you know, not just deaf and blind and those abilities, but all kinds of backgrounds as well. And I think that's su such a key, and well, I and love you that. And you see the results of this, because this show is, and I've had this conversation a couple times over this week, the people that are at this show is not typical for the typical nerd show. Right. And I just love the fact that we put in the work as a community years ago, and we have a result. We can actually see the difference. Yeah, I agree. Yeah, I mean, it's one, it, it does feel, as a woman in tech and a woman who's been in tech for a long time, there's a lot of ladies here. There's a lot of non-binary folks here. And I love that that's celebrated. It's celebrated even in the, even in the Cloud Native Foundation's characters. There are non-binary cartoon characters. I mean, that in itself is, is pretty magical. It, it's nice to know that we're part of such an inclusive community. And on that note, you, Dustin, Rob, thank you so much for joining me. This has been an absolutely fantastic three days of dozens of interviews here at KubeCon, Cloud Native Con, in Paris, France, signing off for the last time. My name's Savannah Peterson. You're watching theCUBE, the leading source for enterprise tech news. Mm -hmm.